everybody. Uh, we uh, um, have a little bit more um, business-related sustainability uh, lecture. So we look at uh, oh, why why is it actually at the business case for sustainability? And we kind of um, go through four segments. So what what is business sustainability actually? Um, business sustainability is like an emphasis on thinking sustainable business. Yeah? So you, you have to kind of divert a little bit from the global issues that we had last week. Yeah, that's certainly where sustainability is rooted. And now focus a little bit on why is business actually interested in it. Yeah? So it's not the full plea of maybe what you can do as an individual, having sustainability at your heart probably, yeah? and uh, um, trying to live a sustainable life. But here we are looking really at the business drivers that may have a very direct interest in the sustainability agenda. Yeah, that, that allows us as well to integrate actually sustainability into the project context. What we are doing in, I think, two weeks. Yeah, ne next week you, you have the wonderful Perla here instead of me, which is uh, probably a, a, a lot better, yeah, uh, at least aesthetically experiencing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, that, that is such. So wh what is it all about? So sustainability is uh, uh, really in business about ensuring the long-term business success. And here we're looking at factors largely relating to economic, social development, healthy environment, and stable society. Yeah, a lot of businesses actually started in the past with that. In many countries, this is still a driver for being legitimate to actually start your business. Yeah, there, there's often this motive that, that goes beyond just making a profit. Yeah? Uh, so as we're looking at social development, uh, um, healthy environment, and civil society. Yeah? So more and more organizations seeking this, so this is really why we are covering, uh, covering this. And uh, it has become uh, a step further from the corporate marketing level and the strategic intent for events out of business uh, to integrating it as well at operational level. Uh, so this is really something that we are doing at the moment. Uh, in many companies that you may aspire to work in, they may already do that. Yeah? So it can be as well a hook for attracting people to go into this. Yeah? And here we come as well to the factors that are underlining it. So this is driven by factors like uh, economics, uh, stakeholder interest. Yeah? So you, you may realize what stakeholders are at the moment already in your parallel module in project program and portfolio management. Yeah, so who's actually interested in probably all of us, or we should be, really. Then there's a legislative element that, that comes often from a national or regional intent to look after something, yeah, led by government or, or you have an authority that overlooks it. And then the, the next stage uh, is when we actually make it a legal framework. Yeah, we, we move from a, a ground for legitimization, wow, this, this company is doing that, that one, to, okay, actually, this is not allowed, you have to comply with this. That is a legal requirement. Yeah, and uh, I allude as well to the competitive effects. Yeah, we, we have actually uh, wonderful examples as well at the moment where we can witness how important sustainability is actually for being uh, uh, a, a good performing company. Yeah? So um, <coughs> this is very important uh, uh, to realize. So performance nowadays is not just uh, our financial results. This is kind of the bottom line. Yeah? So mo most companies can actually not afford for long to not have financial results. But it's also the social and ecological uh, uh, performance that we are interested in. Yeah. OK, let's start the journey. Well, the, the uh, um, big model that is really dominating uh, um, current practice, and if, if you uh, uh, dive into the uh, um, uh, theory, you will see this model is actually around for quite some time now. This is like over eight years uh, old, this uh, uh, model. But it's still uh, um, the driver uh, that, that is uh, actually used for mapping out uh, where, where potential influence is coming from. So here it's the drivers to incorporate sustainability or align processes with principles of sustainable development. Yeah, so or sustainable life cycle management is really what, what the bigger topic is that we are looking at here. So you have actually pressure, license to operate. Yeah? Are you legitimate with your company or with your project organization 
to do this project. Yeah? So here you have uh, introduction of uh, sustainable development into government policies. Yeah, we have as well civil society expectations and we have even international standards being developed and ac accreditation schemes nowadays that are very popular uh, have been undermined in some countries. Yeah? So uh, they're, they're more or less strong depending on the country. But we have as well an ISO standard that uh, normally is embraced once you, you go on the international level. So that is a pressure factor for <laughs> you in projects and the company itself to actually embrace uh, sustainability. <coughs> then we have as well push factors. So this is really the license to exist, if you want, uh, as a, as a uh, um, hint. So investors are looking at this nowadays. Yeah? So there, there is a certain irony. Investors put money into companies, and a lot of companies probably need a little bit of money to develop as well uh, um, sustainability standards in their company. Yeah, but uh, um, more and more investors are actually looking at uh, uh, evidence of good corporate governance and effective management of risk that they associate with not being social responsible. Uh, um, and, and hence they have social responsibility investment evaluations. So there's even a Dow Jones uh, um, separate grouping for that, the sustainability <coughs> index, yeah, how sustainable companies are. Yeah? So I have a look at the uh, um, supply chain from BW at the moment. They are not doing well on this. Yeah? So they have really undermined their trust uh, for investors. Um, I myself have worked as well on World Bank projects, uh, uh, largely in northern South Africa, and uh, we, we had to comply to their sustainability. It, it was environmental uh, uh, incentives that we had to subscribe to. Yeah? So investors set in these standards, otherwise you, you don't get the money that you need to run the project. And employees, yeah? as an employee, would you rather work for a company that is doing sustainable well? or rather a company that ignores it and, and puts a blind eye to it. Yeah, so this is where the fact that you attract actually better talent in projects if you are complying to it. So this, those, uh, this is a push factor. Then we have the pull <coughs> factors. Here you have international trade uh, agreements yeah, that uh, um, kind of allow you the license to sell. So you may not have access with your project to certain markets uh, to bring your product forward unless you actually comply to this. Yeah? Customers expe expecting maybe proof, certification, or compliance to their schemes. I have picked here again like one that, that is ma maybe more typical uh, uh, for Anglo-Saxon countries, but uh, uh, th there, there are many schemes in that format. Yeah? And then international actions as well. Yeah? Global Compact was one example that came to mind, uh, and, and sustainability reporting uh, uh, as another pull factor. Yeah? And with this, you, you can then as well have support to actually bring it in. Yeah, so this is maybe uh, may a, a way of uh, um, kind of finding additional money or, or support as well to, to implement it. So responsible care principles can be there. There as well uh, NGOs that help companies to adopt that. Um, sound corporate cooperation governance, if, if you clean it up, uh, it will be as well perceived respectively. Yeah, so another support <coughs> factor. And then sustainable development frameworks that kind of give you a step-by-step -step guide how you can do it. And corporate social responsibility performance frameworks. Yeah? Again, we, we have the ISO standards already since 2010, yeah? so this is really an old hat. Uh, ha have been uh, uh, iterated because we, we had a lot of problems with this. It didn't work so well at the time, particularly the self-governance. Yeah? Now, why, why is this important to you? Well, there's a statement that comes directly out of this paper, actually, that, that uh, discusses this. As the people who implement initiatives and change, project managers are increasingly being asked to ensure their projects are sustainable, both in terms of outputs and outcomes. Yeah. So, and, and a lot of teams and employees want to have as well the process kind of sustainable, and they want to see, be seen to do good practice. So in order to do this, project manager must have an understanding of the various sustainability drivers, yeah, which we are covering here, luckily. Only then can, pro uh, can a project be planned and implemented to achieve that goal. Yeah? So we, we have to as well find kind of success criteria or ways of monitoring this, yeah, of integrating the factors that drive our project. Yeah? Okay, let's have a look at environmental drivers. 
from a business point, uh, it's, it's actually quite a, a rational view to this, uh, quite marginalized, I, I should add. So uh, climate change, uh, if not anything else, is uh, seen in every business uh, undertaking, business venture, uh, be it uh, uh, how you view the, your project, as a risk factor. If you are not attending to this, you, you are at great risk. Yeah? It can be as, as visible as uh, in an infrastructure project, building a new bridge, that we plan now for a lot more unforeseen events. We cannot take our 100-year predictions anymore. Yeah, we, we have to go with a lot more accurate planning indicators for more severe events into our uh, projects, into the products that we are developing. Yeah? Or maybe uh, telephones. Yeah? If, if you look at nowadays telephones, they think as well of, of how they can actually recycle their parts. Yeah? So th this is seen as a, a um, good, good practice nowadays. It's, it's really uh, um, kind of expected. So here you really have like uh, um, two main factors that drive it. One being the probability of exposure to physical effects of climate change and a potential impact on the business arising from exposure. Yeah, and uh, this translates then into risk of adverse outcomes. And here you have then uh, manage, transfer, mitigate, avoid or accept the risk. And that is of course then uh, resulting in your project. Now, or the product that you're developing or the service and your net vulnerability to climate change. Yeah. So this is of course something that is very directly impacted. Yeah. So this affects, uh, for example, uh, um, if you look at critical <coughs> as uh, assets, critical <coughs> infrastructure, biological or industrial processes, <coughs> then demand for goods and services that can all be sensitive uh, to weather Climate, so uh, may it be in the product uh, um, process, in logistics, you, you name it. Yeah? Um, and infrastructures are different resilient to it. Yeah? If you look at logistics in uh, Scandinavia, snowstorm and uh, um, uh, weather, not a problem. Uh, in England, uh, uh, two, two years ago, we, we noticed quite painfully that we are quite vulnerable. Yeah? Supply chain stops actually for a moment. Yeah? At the I have to say it recovers very quickly too. Yeah, but uh, um, so snow doesn't stay long, luckily. Yeah, but uh, um, if it does, then uh, uh, it stops really kind of the infrastructure that, that we have in terms of logistics. Yeah. Now there is as well a resource efficiency uh, uh, plea really behind this, and, and that is a little bit the industrial ecologic process. It's an optimization uh, uh, plea. And it's really to reconsider your whole process. And there are certain business models that lean itself to it. So when we are subcontracting, how can we actually see how efficient they are? Yeah, but the idea is that we uh, um, come up with a very efficient way. So this means you have to commit to pre-planning and then look as well at the processes and interfaces that you're using. Yeah? <coughs> so all businesses can save money by using resources uh, such as water, energy, raw materials more eff uh, uh, efficiently. And uh, forward-thinking companies are already seeing the opportunities and benefits of sustainability can offer. Yeah? So a lot of businesses are doing this already. And a lot of project setups of how we are organizing our projects, we kind of disadvantage ourselves. Yeah? We come as well in project program and portfolio management to integrated project delivery. That is treating the project as one organization. Yeah? And in some countries, you have actual terminology for it. <coughs> so in Germany and Austria, it's a AGE. Yeah? Uh, you may have heard of that particular uh, construction and uh, uh, product development. And then you have on the other side here the integrated uh, project delivery uh, incentive. It will be as well professional standard action. Yeah? In construction, it's uh, um, in, in the UK, it's driven by a BIM, building information modeling uh, incentive, yeah? and, and a standard that the government is embracing. In other uh, industries like automotive, or aerospace, or as well marine engineering, you see it already because the supply chain is otherwise not competitive enough. Now, there are high value resources that you want to optimize yeah, because the waste is costing too much. Yeah. Now, um, th this is as well from a, a lovely book, and it, it explains as well how products can be recycled. So, this is as well uh, planning how you can minimize waste, recycle, who may be <coughs> interested in your uh, um, spare capacity. Yeah, so, in, in some of our uh, um, yeah. 
a practical example from PepsiCo. Uh, um, when when you do uh, um, uh, potato crisps, yeah, or, or in other countries you call it chips, but this is really confusing. So uh, uh, anyway, so in, in the process, we, we notice there's effluent, uh, um, basically wastewater afterwards, because you use a lot uh, um, for cleaning up the starch from the potato in a nutshell. And we, we noticed the water was actually purified st starch soup. Yeah, and uh, um, it didn't take us, uh, it turns out, one on the project team was a, a connoisseur of uh, uh, alcoholic delights, it turns out. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he was like, wait a minute, starch water, this is amazing. We dry the stuff and sell it to the whiskey industry or vodka industry. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we, we made basically a, a small filter system at the end. And uh, a hydro cycle, yeah, we'd be like, to be uh, if you're in engineering, you, you don't just have a screen, you know, you want something that, that uh, impacts visibly. Yeah, and uh, we, we cleaned up the water, you had uh, drinking water on the other side and a starch product that we could sell to the industry. Yeah, this was not the business case, this was sustainability in its application, thinking through the principles, yeah, particularly with resources, yeah. It's a wonderful example, yeah. Okay. Then you have as well the environmental uh, uh, proactivity, and, and here we really look a little bit in where, where the proactivity comes from. Yeah, so you, you may have uh, external drivers, this may be regulations. Uh, so you, you're really being asked, uh, uh, maybe by your regulator or, or by your clients, uh, um, actually clients is probably more safe for that pressure, but uh, by, by regulations to comply. And it's an uh, imposed behavior. You know, this is often something that is difficult. Normally you start monitoring this with ticking boxes, you know, have we actually done this? And if yes, then, then you're on a right uh, a trip. Then you have uh, stakeholder pressure, you know, that, that really uh, kind of forces you to corporate environmental proactivity. But you can as well work on the culture. So see it as economic <coughs> opportunity, or maybe even as ethical motivation, doing the right thing. You know? So, and, and then you have voluntary behavior that maybe comes from the company or comes from the project organization where you collaborate with voluntary organizations. Yeah? And, and again, yeah, I've kind of uh, I said it out here, so key practices might include respective planning, yeah? such as decision making based on environmental management system, uh, matrices. So this is integrating processes that we cover here as well into your decision making model. Yeah? And uh, first of all, adapting them uh, sensibly to, to your particular project. Yeah? But we, we do that in, in two weeks. Yeah? So we, we have as well personal assets. I've picked here two examples, but uh, um, I, I know this as well. This is kind of 2010. This is kind of 2013. So they're not really at the vogue. Do, do you have somebody that stands for personal assets for you? Can you have an example? We, we can take one. Uh, um, so Ian uh, was the founder of Patagonia. They make kind of uh, um, clothes for, for the outdoors. Yeah, and uh, um, he really uh, loved nature. And, and he wanted to have <laughs> materials that first of all do their prime purpose you know, of giving you shelter that you need in uh, uh, rough environments. But at the same time, he wanted to kind of not uh, um, exploit nature or, or really change major environment surfaces to kind of uh, uh, give him so, uh, resources for, for his products. And, and he used really his catalogs. Uh, you, you may get them through the post. Those are these lovely booklets that you can use to stop the door. No, uh, to, to see the product range, of course. Uh, um, he used that actually to uh, um, kind of highlight environmental issues on the top ranks. Yeah? So he, he basically took the front of the actual advertising book uh, uh, of the catalog. <coughs> yeah? to point out environmental issues, what we have to look out for. Yeah? So this is uh, a genetically modified food, and uh, this is controversial, but, uh, and, and overfishing as well was quite an <coughs> uh, um, interesting one. Yeah? So there, there were as well a lot of games being played if you actually look in, into those political issues. Uh, then they became political issues, and uh, this is important to recognize. Did you have somebody, personal uh, uh, ethics, that you think like, wow, yeah, here's a, Patron for uh, sustainability or, or for, for good ethics, good business ethics? I, I take any example, yeah, uh, as long as you tell me why. Yeah. No? How oh, the business world is quite good yet. I, I'm, I'm, I'm <coughs> There's nobody that is famous, maybe for good ethical conduct. 
Anita Roderick. Who? Anita Roderick. She set up the body shop in the late 70s, early 80s and was a yeah. leader in um, non animal testing. Yes. So, so body shop then, as an example? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, her specifically was the driver behind it, and sadly when we sold it to L'Oreal. Oh, it, it moved on. Yeah. Okay, uh, I wasn't fully aware of the full story, but yeah. uh, a body shot may be a, a good example of trying to move away from animals uh, uh, being tested on the uh, um, well, impact of... And also of natural, uh, natural products as well. Okay, a natural product. So she really embraced probably the environmental yeah. and maybe as well uh, um, social agenda of sustainability. Yeah, so quite, quite a powerful one. So th there are many people out there, but we don't recognize them in the same way necessarily as uh, um, yeah, successful businessmen with new uh, um, business models. But uh, it, it's worthwhile to have a look in your area where you want to work. Who are actually the personalities that drive sustainability? Or have an ethical conduct towards uh, uh, business. Yeah. Okay. So then we have as well uh, social drivers. So before that, that were the environmental drivers. With the social drivers, we we really have uh, um, actually quite a raft. But uh, uh, and and we will unfold that. So you will actually start that next week with uh, Perla looking at culture. Yeah. And then how this sits with sustainability and how information impacts as well on us. Yeah, did, did, did you actually know what's sustainable and what isn't sustainable yeah? when it comes, for example, to simple items that you surround yourself with? Yeah, so this is a very different, uh, the, the, uh, so a topic that we have to investigate in quite some detail. So what I want to start with, with the social uh, aspect of sustainability, it's really the social sustainable enterprise. So here the issue of whether companies should consider their social responsibility is outdated. Yeah, this was 2010 PIP. And like, oh, yeah, we, we are thinking about it. But uh, nowadays, it's not anymore a question. They just ask you, OK, what are you actually working on? How are you improving? Yeah. With projects, we still sometimes get away with it, yeah, because they are often not visible, depending on what projects you have. If you have a changed project, for example, then there, there may not be uh, the sustainability a major consideration that covers all three aspects, yeah. being social, environmental, and as well economic. So here, uh, uh, social sustainability has become an integrate, uh, integral part of the creation of shareholder value as well. So this is kind of the top-down view, yeah, where a lot of companies are very interested in this. But as well at uh, um, yeah, a more managerial level, so when, when it comes to uh, yeah, middle management, yeah, where, where you would be with a project management position, at least, yeah, if not higher, uh, um, you, you come as well to that point where you are both uh, uh, required to kind of keep an eye on global and local enterprises practices. Yeah? If, if you miss that out, then you, you are actually uh, falling behind. So socially, uh, uh, socially sustainable enterprise, <coughs> uh, um, already defined quite some time ago actually by Gladwin, and, and they looked at uh, um, envi environmental practice being impacted, but they, they went a lot further already at the time. Require that the firm needs to internalize social costs Maintain and grow the capital stock. Avoid exceeding uh, the social carrying capacities. Encourage structures for self-renewal. Force the democracy. Enlarge the range of people's choices and distribute resources and property uh, rights fairly. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of disagreement potentially with a lot of our business models that we have with a lot of our business processes. Actually, just for, for the democracy, but in our faculty, although at the university level you would hope for something like that, we, we have an executive team, mm -hmm. yeah, then a board structure. And it's not voted, it's recruited. Yeah? So this is maybe, uh, um, so maybe even universities or, or many organizations around us are not doing too well on this. Yeah? On a project, you have the power yourself. Often you, you are as well part of uh, um, the decision making of how you want to run a project. Yeah. So those are a few uh, um, categories to actually look at when, when you look at social sustainability. <coughs> then we have the corporate sustainability. Yeah. And uh, again, I have kind of uh, given here your uh, uh, the stakeholder analysis, if you want, coming from the environmental 
to societal, economic, and organizational. So those are kind of uh, stakeholders that may impact on that. Yeah. So here, uh, um, corporate sustainability can be defined. Again, this is a quote from a journal. Meeting the needs of a firms, oh, not fee firms, but uh, uh, firms, direct and indirect stakeholders, such as shareholders, employees, clients, but I have listed it on the, so you, you have uh, the et cetera as well. By the way, there's even et cetera in that list, but uh, leave that aside. So without compromising its ability to meet the need of future stakeholders as well. Yeah, it's, a, it's a recognition that there is something coming afterwards. Yeah. So as well, the public is becoming more aware. Uh, um, this is more visible in media. This depends a little bit what media you are engaging with. And there is as well a bias uh, based on speciality. So some countries are quite proactive to this. Others, it's, it's still a fight with uh, um, yeah, other drivers that, that uh, dominate their agendas. Yeah? Uh, an important uh, um, uh, element to realize at that point is really alternatively uh, the consequences of minimizing sustainability and stakeholder relationship can be significant and costly in terms of reputational damage and of course uh, uh, potential impacts on the bottom line. This is really the operations, people not buying your product. Now you're your product team falling apart, people leaving. Yeah? This is a uh, um, yeah, there, there are quite a few. Uh, we had at the uh, at the time a lot of students from Eurocopter. This is uh, 2011, and you remember Eurocopter fell into bad press because they were like, uh, they they published their report and they had uh, re-engaged with building military uh, helicopters, and that was like a thing that many of the engineers didn't want to be associated with. Although they were working in a completely different uh, uh, unit of that company. They didn't even want to be associated with the company anymore. And many good people left to the competitor. And the competitor was like, yes, I have additional uh, uh, capacity. And countries even subscribed, in, in, for example, Switzerland changed uh, their supplier. Although Eurocopter uh, uh, builds as well in Switzerland. But that's an entire different uh, uh, thing. Yeah? But uh, anyway, so there, there was an impact. Yeah? Now, we have as well the corporate assets, and here is one of the processes that you can adapt as well for, for your project. Yeah? So it, it gives you kind of a tool to evaluate the risks and have a systematic approach to evaluate and consider strategies or, or tactics, maybe even how to deal with it. Yeah? So corporate ethics or, or business ethics is a form of applied ethics or professional ethics that examines the ethical principles and moral or ethical problems that arise in the business environment. And you can see that there's a prevent <coughs> strategy. So once you, uh, actually you have to start with define, yeah? So uh, access risks, align policies and procedures to risk, define a risk profile, map risk to job function. And yeah? so uh, allow us where the people that are actually capable to evaluate and identify to identify it. You know? So here you, you need brainstorming or, or uh, ways of capturing it yeah, from past projects. Then uh, uh, set a uh, prevention strategy, yeah, tone uh, um, at the top, online education, so the educational uh, um, uh, elements, uh, facilitate workshops to make aware, but uh, in the paper it's as well uh, on there more, and a communication at the right time yeah, to really make sure that you are preventing. Yeah, then detect uh, uh, controls for rapid detection, employee certification maybe even, yeah, so you have a professional that actually looks out for this, a lot of you will have probably a background like that. Yeah? If you come from a technical background, then a lot of you do, as far as I'm aware. You, you may actually be one of the experts to look out for particular hazards. Yeah? Then you, you have as well uh, self-reporting channels and compliance <laughs> auditing and monitoring as appropriate. Yeah? So you may have to turn about uh, uh, watching out for that as well. Then respond, of course, not uh, really uh, um, uh, 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 with the case identification, investigation, uh, investigation and closure, and corrective action where possible, <coughs> root cause analysis, where is it actually coming from, and of course, communication resolution. What, what are we going to do? And as well, keeping your team basically involved in that. And then again, last but not least, evaluate metrics and benchmarks uh, for past uh, risk uh, strategies versus uh, maybe what you could do different. Uh, policies, practices, procedures, if you uh, go a structured word, <coughs> where, uh, reports and actions respectively capturing them, yeah, lessons learned. 
uh, and then uh, system improvements perspective to the to, to the definition stage. Yeah. Now we, we have seen that as well, and uh, um, today we have actually most major corporate websites lay actually emphasis on commitment on promoting non-economic social values under a uh, varied uh, of headings such as ethic codes and social responsibility charters. Um, this has as well been extremely criticised for being arbitrary. And also the be aware of that there is as well uh, um, quite, quite a bit of negative uh, uh, press. But in, in some cases, corporations have redefined their core values in the light of business ethics uh, uh, considerations. For example, uh, British Petroleum, uh, BP, yeah? Beyond Petroleum Environmental uh, Tilt. Now this back backfired, of course. What, what did that backfire? Yes. Yeah. So they, they went actually for uh, um, a, a deep, uh, um, yeah, deep sea uh, um, exploration for oil, and uh, um, basically hadn't had yet uh, um, a system that was risk averse enough to actually do it. So and it went wrong. Yeah. So and, and it was like seen a little bit as an ironic game. Uh, they were a major pollutant of, of a. A whole environment uh, that, that had a knock on, yeah? and uh, the the whole oil industry actually suffered enormously in terms of reputation. <coughs> yeah? A lot of uh, governments uh, responded, put new audit systems into place, and that really <coughs> adds cost to your operations. Yeah? So things like that. Uh, uh, one mistake from your industry, yeah? uh, uh, and uh, you, you may have additional costs that that weren't there before. So very expensive to ignore that. Corporate social responsibility is probably uh, um, the, the most common one, as I pointed out. ISO uh, 26000 is already there now for quite some time. So this is really kind of the, uh, well, it's really referred to as a corporate conscious. And I, I always think that that goes a little bit far uh, um, because uh, um, yeah, the, the joke for my, my colleague is a consultant for, for helping companies to develop corporate social responsibility, putting the right processes in place. Alex Hope is coming as well for guest lectures at the end uh, uh, for the uh, well, for two sessions at the end uh, uh, of the semester. And uh, he, he has noticed one thing: the, the more thorough the corporate social responsibility is in volume, the less normally translated <coughs> into practice. Yeah? Yeah. So this is of course a real uh, uh, shame. Yeah, uh, th this is not how it should be. I hope it has improved, uh, uh, maybe from last year to this year. Maybe we can ask him again yeah, in, in uh, five weeks. Yeah, uh, but uh, um, it, it should really be seen, and that is what it's argued as, corporate conscious, corporate citizenship, yeah, so how, how the company and the employees and their actions are as well part of citizenship, social performance, or sustainable, responsible business. Yeah, and uh, this is an interesting one. Responsible business is something that we are embracing suddenly enormously. Uh, we have realized that just subscribing to sustainability is not enough. We really want to go that step further and want to be seen that you're responsible, accountable. Yeah? <coughs> so this is really where it's coming from. Uh, traditionally, this has been associated with self-regulation. Um, thinking now of uh, uh, the wonderful VW uh, uh, example again that we have been milking now for three weeks. Uh, um, the, uh, so many countries don't believe in self-regulation. Yeah? So in, in Germany and, and uh, Italy and France, they said straight away uh, um, government auditing organization up because they were like, yes, trust goes so far, but let's have a look at uh, uh, shared interest, you know, and then we, we audit you externally. And then there was a recognition that if you are too close, it becomes very difficult to make actually a judgment and uh, uh, call a stop and say like, hey, we can't do this. Yeah? This becomes incredibly difficult. Yeah? Many generally there as well certain communication formats that uh, suddenly you're not allowed to email anymore, you're asked to come directly in the room. Uh, if somebody emails and uh, uh, yeah, so th th this is always a bad sign when things like that start. Yeah? Uh, um, and, and it's really a push as well um, uh, that, that comes from uh, activities on the environment, consumers, employees, communities, stakeholders, and all other uh, members of the public sphere yeah, that, that may be impacted by this yeah, uh, and, and prospective uh, uh, counter uh, movements. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> economic drivers. Here, here we are diving into the uh, um, main business sphere. So this is really what, what everybody should know by heart yeah, uh, if, if you are into business. 
we, we, we are often after cost savings or opportunities. Yeah? I, I don't really like uh, cost savings. I, I like always to uh, generate more. Yeah? This is a, a, um, a general recommendation for me because cost savings normally go. Uh, um, so we have wonderful schemes as well, like lean. Uh, um, keep in mind, if you optimize the human too much, then you run around with one kidney, one eye. You know, it, it becomes, the, 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 uh, all I'm saying is that there are implications, yeah? So you, you have to make a, a, a just judgment there. So, but uh, jo joke aside, so driving down costs is uh, uh, normally really the idea. And here, return on capital, including operational efficiency and workforce efficiency. This is normally the dominant, uh, uh, yeah, language. If you really go into uh, um, cost saving studies, you will see it's a lot more refined. Yeah? So it's not that simple. But it, it does its purpose for this narrative. Yeah? So cost savings from improved operational performance and efficiencies, uh, process optimization, a lot of you probably already trained on that. Yeah? A lot of companies have that as a core driver already. Yeah? Uh, here you, you can look, uh, for example, at reduced <coughs> material inputs, energy efficiencies, uh, waste minimization, selling on what, what is waste to your product, to other people that consider it as a primary aggregate, yeah, considering maybe as well uh, um, aggregate life cycles, uh, well what, what it actually means. And often the, the benefit of doing so is you, you have a better relationship uh, um, with uh, regular, uh, regulatory agencies and uh, this often leads to less red tape. Yeah, and being seen as a champion maybe for good practice. So mm -hmm. you may have example on that as well. Now with this often comes as well bottom line cost savings through environmental operation practices. Uh, so here again, water and energy efficiency, less raw materials uh, um, needed. And uh, um, a side effect is often as well in your portfolio of the company or project, you, you have a generating of growth. Yeah? Here, uh, including new markets, maybe new products, new customers, market share, uh, innovation, maybe yeah, that, that you can patent or, or that you can uh, um, champion to other companies as a service, yeah, or a consultancy service, um, and it increases as well reputation uh, differentiation, maybe you know, that, that you are outstanding for others, and again, uh, reputation in terms of price premium. Yeah. So again, the qu how much does an uh, iPhone cost? The new one. 700. Hi, hi, hi. Do you know how much it costs to be made? Production costs, all the materials, all the workforce to put it together and then post? <laughs> no, it's not that bad. Uh, it's, it's 150, yeah? At least that is a rough estimate, yeah? Who, who said 50? How do we get it for 50, actually, when we should talk to each other? Uh, um, yeah, no, but uh, um, 150. So we have an enormous, uh, um, they, they can charge that much, you, you're paying it for the development. Yeah? So this is a commitment to their company that they will get an even better iPhone in the future for you. Yeah? They spend it on research and development to develop their iPhone even further. Yeah? So Samsung has a similar, uh, um, uh, so the Android phones are not far off, actually, I said. They are a little bit cheaper and a little bit uh, more expensive, actually, in, us, uh, uh, in the production. But uh, yeah, it shows you where, where they have optimized. Yeah, yeah and again, if, if you have an increase in revenue uh, through learning and innovation, sustainability can help to identify new markets and price premium opportunities. Uh, so this is uh, important to recognize. Now, sustainability and investment, you, you can see that, uh, um, so this is a survey from 2009, and it has actually been, it, it will be published this year, yeah? uh, so, so we should really uh, keep an eye on it. They, they are just uh, are doing it at the moment, or it has been completed, but they haven't published a new uh, um, article on it. So you can see as well that uh, at least uh, um, at an investment point, uh, investors actually kind of require you to engage with sustainability. Yeah? So it's, it's really the push factor that we talked about earlier. And uh, so just to give you an idea, sorry, I, I forgot the percentages. Yeah? So uh, uh, in, in kind of uh, during the long term, so 2008 to uh, 2009, it was only 25 wanted to increase their focus on sustainability. Uh, um, 34, so a big chunk didn't really uh, want to change. And there were many that saw it as a costly activity. Yeah. So if, if you look at the percentage, the same that wanted to increase felt as well that it was additional cost and additional resources. So they actually turned away from it. Already in 2010, 
uh, uh, same population again surveyed uh, felt actually very different about it and the plans for 2011 were even greater so now there is this where the element of value creation coming so we had already a lot of examples but just to make it uh, um, uh, explicit so we, we can actually uh, look at value creation at pricing power uh, so this maybe increased prices because of what you're doing uh, then you have cost savings because you can sell on maybe you need waste products, yeah, breast products that you have. Then employee recruitment and engagement, you're attracting talents, smart people, yeah, smarter than, shouldn't really say it, but uh, uh, I assume you're all smarter than me, yeah, so in, in a way, you are the coming generation, you are even better and smarter, yeah, so you will make it an even better place, yeah, so imagine, like in recruitment, I, I want you on board, yeah, and I would certainly recruit you, yeah. So that, that is a marginal improvement, yeah, and it has a huge impact on the profits. Then you have as well improved customer loyalty and lower rate of trade. So here is a market share, yeah, where you're really working on relationships maybe with your customer. New market entry, yeah, with new products maybe that come out of your product. So here you have revenue growth really ori orienting, uh, um, and again profits that, that are impacted. And then we have as well risk premiums. Yeah, if you monitor already for it you are very aware of your risk. You, you can think about how to manage them. Yeah? And respectively, investors will be more interested in you because you have higher control. You are less risky to go with. Yeah? We'll be coming to that actually with portfolios. Investors will look at it. We may get 25% return. Oh, but it's 50% risky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like throwing a coin. Yeah? So you, you have just burned basically your capital that you're putting in there. Yeah? So if you can reduce that risk to 25%, now, now we have a business model. It's one in four, <coughs> so th this is worth investing. Yeah? Then, then we spray a little bit our investment, uh, uh, spread it, yeah, that, that uh, uh, we have four projects, and at least one will return the, uh, um, give you back the return you're after. Yeah? Then cost of capital as well, lower cost of capital for that exact reason. Yeah? So you, you're reducing risk and you're a lot more attractive. Yeah? And again, this, this comes into valuation multiplier, and more people want to invest, so you have even spare capital potential. Yeah. So this is quite an interesting one. Now, many people as well say, like, oh, sustainability, is this not a disagreement with competitive nature, particularly if you work with societies? Now, uh, at the firm level, competitive uh, advantages, of course, forged out of in a nutshell, resources that are available to you that everybody has access to. So it's really the way what you're doing with it and how you're turning that into your product. Yeah, uh, um, beyond just compliance and creating and deploying its unique uh, capabilities, uh, um, you really want to give it the additional edge. So in other words, sustainability is very likely to make you actually more competitive yeah, because you are outstanding. You do what the others are doing, but on top of it, you are well sustainable. So in, in the competitive argument, where well you can have a look at the paper that I have as well suggested, there were hot arguments and it was often uh, dismissed on that uh, basis, and we, we see actually the opposite. So what are the business uh, uh, drivers, if you want? Improved image yeah, seems to be uh, um, one that sadly uh, uh, most companies see as a main driver for doing this. Uh, it's a good one, but you would hope they would go a little bit further. So next surprising one is actually cost savings. Yeah? So this is uh, um, the next driver <coughs> for businesses to actually uh, uh, address sustainable issues. Yeah? Cost savings. Then competitive advantage. <coughs> then employee satisfaction, moral and retention. People don't use the company that quickly anymore. Yeah? They stay with your company. Yeah, you create a relationship. People want to belong there. Yeah? Then product and service of market innovation, business model, process innovation, so those are the driver and, and the rest you can read. Yeah, but the point is, uh, uh, sustainability has a huge import, uh, I uh, impact. Yeah? You, you could see it as well, uh, sustainability is the mother of innovation. Yeah? Once you, you kind of uh, look at your product and services that you're doing, and you go in with the principles, you often look at what you're doing with very different eyes. Yeah? So it's as well, uh, uh, kind of shown that a lot of great innovations come just out of the uh, exercise of reassessing how we are doing things with the sustainability lens. Yeah? A lot of innovations can actually spring out of that. Yeah? 
Hence, uh, uh, sustainability is the mother of innovation. Uh, Alex Hope and I, we have written as well a paper on this. Yeah? So uh, um, it's a good read. Uh, 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 yeah. Pro project management is the father of innovation. Yeah? That is the other paper. But uh, I don't think that we uh, get that published in the International Journal of Project Management. We try to still push it there. Yeah? Now, another factor was uh, customer loyalty. Yeah, so here you have sustainability provides an opportunity to develop customers' willingness to pay increase or, or a premium. Yeah? Uh, um, deeper understanding, uh, do, do you do that? Uh, can, can I just check? Do, do, are you happy to pay more? Let, let's do it. Okay, so there are a lot of people nodding. So let, let's go for one product. Where do you buy your coffee? <coughs> Who, who buys it here on the campus? Can I ask? Uh, who, who needs a coffee occasionally? Okay, so quick question. Do, do you buy it from Costa? <coughs> okay, yeah, some do. Starbucks? Oh, more, okay. Uh, the, the small coffee shop down the road? <laughs> there, there are a few, but they're, they're non brand So there's Coffee Trader, the, uh, um, the what, what's the new Jasmine coffee place called? Uh, um, that, that kind of has their own coffee mix? Okay, people don't even know about it. <laughs> yes. coffee, Co co coffee company, yeah, yeah that's the one. Company, yeah. yeah, that's the one. And they, they have as well a small store. Yeah, nice, nice coffee, uh, particularly if you like strong coffee. But again, yeah, very, very expensive. <laughs> yeah, so uh, um, Costa subscribes to some scheme. Starbucks really pushing with a lot of schemes, but you pay as well a lot more money uh, for the same cup of coffee. Uh, if you look at the percentage, you, you pay something like 30% more. Uh, so you, you're obviously paying for it. And the body shop example was as well there, but for a different reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Recruitment and retention, I mentioned that already. So uh, um, there are many companies where, where you see that they even work for less salary. Yeah, uh, it's, it's as well like I, I work at university to sit at the heart of innovation. And I know in three years, most of you, by average, will earn more than I will ever earn here at this university. This is quite grim, isn't it? <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, and I know as well that in, in six years, uh, a lot of you will earn more than double than what I will ever earn in my life. So it's heartbreaking on many levels. But uh, it's okay. I'm, I'm here for the for, for the knowledge. So it's, it's good. Yeah. Okay. We have as well a legislative driver, but I run out of time, and uh, um, we, we had them already. So there's a regulatory side, yeah, which is driven by law, then the risk management uh, uh, point. So here we really avoid uh, uh, litigation, legal claims, and accident expenses. Yeah? So like, uh, I don't know if you had heard about VW, it turns out they have actually a risk budget of six billion <coughs> for this going wrong. Yeah? This, this shows that was intended. That is the risk assessment. I don't think anybody will notice. And like, let, let's put six billion aside and see if we get it. And now they are being sued, of course, in America, uh, probably for more, actually. Yeah? And it shows you company scores well calculated as Russian affairs in voluntary schemes. Yeah, when we talked about Starbucks, you, you may know a few. Fair trade one that guarantees minimum pay in the supply chain. So this doesn't mean supply chain of uh, Western countries or of America and prices throughout the supply chain. That means like local, uh, uh, like minimum pay. Yeah? So this, this depends very much on the country where the product comes from. But nonetheless, it's better than many other companies. And then uh, this is what I wanted to read. Uh, where there is as well a competitive notion, this is quite an old study. Actually, if you look at recent studies, this is why the chart is not there, so this is slightly misleading. We have actually kind of a banana, so you can as well be incredible. So when you come to being very effective, where you will see that you can be still, uh, um, well, current competitiveness, yeah, so how, do, how well they are doing versus environmental uh, regulation regime, so you can see Finland in, in 2000, no wait, this is even older, I think. no, yeah, 2000, they, they were the leaders, uh, now it has shifted a little bit, and what's surprising is some companies have just well arrived here, uh, so uh, um, uh, there, there was, uh, I don't know who it was, I think it's United Emirates, uh, they're actually somewhere here, and they, they have outrun, I, I think now it has moved as well other companies, I think Norway is as well there. But Norway is kind of just leading before kind of uh, United Emirates and then it's again Finland. And so it's not that clear cut anymore, but Tucson was very clear cut. Yeah, so ju just be aware of that. And uh, so there is a there, there was a correlation, but it's of course not the correla uh, correlation, it's more a relationship. 
Yeah, and nowadays, uh, you, you see we become more international. So this is shifting, of course, over time. Yeah. Okay. Now, quick summary before uh, we, we run to the seminar. So, uh, um, it's really uh, uh, important to keep in mind the drivers uh, that, that we have come from environmental uh, side, social <coughs> side, business side, economic, and as well legislative. And legislative is very different from country, locality to locality. Yeah? I hope that makes a little bit sense. I'll run really through it. Uh, um, ha have a look as well at the uh, uh, papers that I have. Uh, um, so, if you use those drivers yeah, to, to make a case for sustainability, there's always a business justification in it. Uh, I haven't yet seen one project where that didn't make sense. Yeah? But we, we will discuss that as well in detail. Yeah? Okay, I have as well further reading with the links and then uh, uh, some references that I have used for this presentation. Um, today we have as well a look <coughs> at the assessment, and then if we have some time, we, we have a little bit of a look at some leaders that actually make a plea. And I want to hear as well your business cases uh, that you have come across. Yeah, so we, we do that as well in this seminar if we have time. But most of all, it's important for me that you get all your head around the assessment of that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.